Similar polygons. As you look at the pictures in, on the screen in front of you, you have two tiger heads. They are actually identical copies of each other. One of them has just been shrunk from the other one. So we have the original one, and now we have the small one. They have not changed at all, just simply made bigger. That's what we're talking about today when we talk about similar polygons. Similar polygons. When we talk about similar polygons, we're talking about shapes in which the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional. Hopefully you remember what proportional was from Lesson 6.1. But simply, it is just a comparison of two quantities to each other, two ratios set equal to each other. Okay, so we have corresponding angles are congruent, meaning all the angles in the two shapes are going to be equal, but the sides are simply going to be proportional, meaning they're all going to have the same ratios. Here we have two quadrilaterals. They happen to look a lot like trapezoids. That doesn't matter, although we can kind of do a visual check to see if they seem to be the same. Our first check is, are the angles congruent? 120 to 120. Going clockwise around the figure, 140 to 140, 55 to 55, and 45 to 45. The corresponding angles are indeed congruent. Next, we're going to go through a few checks. The first thing we want to do, like we just did, is check the corresponding angles. And they all are. Angle J is congruent to angle U. Angle R, M, is congruent to angle R. Angle L is congruent to angle S. And angle K is congruent to angle T. That all checks out. Next, we're going to test the ratios for the corresponding sides. The corresponding part is very important. We learned about that back in a previous chapter when we talked about corresponding angles. Now we're going to talk about corresponding sides. Basically what you're trying to do is match them up. I'm going to match up JM, which is the side that connects or is between the 45 and the 120 degree angles, with the RU, which is in the same spot between the 45 and 120. Next, I have ML, which is between the 120 and 140, uh, with a ratio with RS, which is between the 120 and 140. We continue that on with LK and ST and JK and UT. We now know the ratios that we want to compare. Now we actually want to do the comparison. So now we want to replace the sides with the actual lengths of each side. JM is 12, UR is 3. ML is 20, RS is 5, LK is 17, ST is 4.25, JK is 26, and UT is 6.5. We now have our ratio set up. And what we need to do next is just simplify each fraction. In other words, divide them out. 12 divided by 3 is 4, 20 divided by 5 is 4, 17, point, 17 divided by 4.25 is 4 and 26 divided by 6.5 is 4. Now that we have all of the angles are congruent and all of the sides have a similar ratio, in other words identical ratio, we can now state that the similarity that the two quadrilateral quadrilaterals are similar so we can write a similarity statement. Quadrilateral MLKJ now if we look at it Notice I started in this top corner up here, and I went M to L to K to J. I went clockwise around the shape, starting at the 100 degree angle, or 120 degree angle. If I started at 120 on the first one, I have to go to 120 in the second. M to L connected 120 to 40 degrees. R to S connects the same thing. So for the next figure, we should go R, S, T, U. And looking at it, we have quadrilateral RSTU. Order is incredibly important when writing our similarity statements. Here's a new one. The question is, are these triangles similar? Well, in order to be similar, we need to have a ratio between the sides. Well, it appears in this one that the ratio between the sides should be OK. Since this side on the 40 degree is congruent to this one, 
and this side in the 40 is congruent to this one, we do have the similarity ratios. It's actually going to be 1 to 1 because no matter what size we have from the 40 degree triangle, this side and the other triangle is going to be the same thing. So if it was 4 on the 40, it would be 4 on the 50. Similarly, since the other side is also congruent, notice we have isosceles triangles, it would be a 4 to 4 again. No matter what, I just chose the number 4. It could have been 14, 14. It doesn't really matter. All we cared is that these sides were congruent. Therefore, their similarities or their proportions have to be equal. Now if we check our angles, since this is a 40 up here and we have a uh, isosceles triangle, we know that the bottom two angles have to make up the remaining 140 degrees. Therefore, they would have to be 70 and 70. If we go to the other triangle, we have a 50 degree angle, which leaves us 130. Therefore, the other two angles would have to be 65 and 65. If you remember back from what we learned in chapter 5, the base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent. Well, you can see real quickly that these triangles are definitely not similar. The angles have to be congruent between the two shapes, and they definitely are not. We can move on. We already know they are not similar. Here's another one to check. Are they similar? You probably saw from the last one, the easiest way to check this is to first check the angles. 80 and 60 make 140. That leaves us 40 degrees for this corner right here. 80 and 40 make 120. That leaves us 60 for this angle right here. Looks like we have similar triangles. We have 80, 60, 40, and 80, 60, 40. We have the angles, corresponding angles, congruent. Let's check the ratios. If I use 5.2 from the first triangle, what would have to go below it? Well, the 5.2 comes between the 60 and 80. On the other triangle, between the 60 and the 80 is 3.9. We set that equal to BC, which is between the 80 40, is 7. Between the 80 40 and the other one is 5.2. Five. And lastly, the bottom side is 8 and 6. What we have to do now is simplify those ratios. We can either try and make them into simplified fractions or divide them out. If you divide 5.2 by 3.9, you're going to get 1.333 repeating. If you divide 7 by 5.25, you will also get 1.3 repeating. And lastly, if you take one, 8 divided by 6, you're also going to get 1.3 repeating. Therefore, these two triangles are similar. The similarity statement would be triangle ABC is similar. Don't use the congruency sign. This is a similarity is similar. Now if I started at A, it's by the 60 degrees, that means I need to start by the R. Then I went B, which is by the 80 degrees, so I'd have to use S, and finally I'd use T. We now have our similarity statement. It's triangle ABC is similar to triangle RST. Scale factor. We talked about this in our last video. It is a ratio of the corresponding side lengths. It is a comparison of side lengths of two different objects. An architect, is prepared, an architect prepared a 12 inch model of a skyscraper to look like a real 1,100 foot building. What is the scale factor of the model compared to the real building? We have the model 12 inches over the real building 1,100 feet. We know that there are 12 inches in one foot. So we can change or alter 12 inches and change that to one foot over 1,100 feet. 
labels are incredibly important when doing scale factor. We need them to be able to cancel out. So we have feet and feet. They do cancel out. Therefore, our scale factor is 1 to 1100. And that's our answer. Next, we have two pentagons. We know they're similar because we are told by this symbol right here. That is a similarity symbol. It looks like the top half of a, of a congruency symbol. We have a pentagon similar to a pentagon. Let's try and create some proportions. What would the 6 match up to? Notice the 6 is between the, three con excuse me, the 4 congruency marks right there and the 5 congruency marks right there. Let's check on the other one. Between the 5 congruency marks and between the 4 congruency marks, we have a 4. We have our first ratio, 6 to 4. That gives us our scale factor. It is a 6 to 4. Now we just need to match up any of the other parts to be able to figure out x and y, doing it one at a time. Let's do x first. Remember, our scale factor was 6 to 4. Now if we choose the x side of the triangle, that happens to be between the three congruency marks and the two. We have to find the same spot on the other uh, picture. Between the three and the two is the three. Now cross multiply and solve. We get 18 equals 4x, divide by 4, divide by 4, and x equals 9 over 2. 9 halves. Now let's go into the y. We can start with the same scale factor of 6 to 4. Now we have to figure out the y. Well, in the first figure, between the 1 and the 2 is the 8. On the second picture, figure, between the 1 and the 2 is the y plus 1. So we have 8 over y plus 1. Cross multiplying, we get 6y plus 6 equals 32. Minus the 6, and you get 6y equals 26. Divide by 6, and your simplified ratio there would be 13 over 3. Sometimes, depending on how, how accelerated math asks you the questions, you'll have to give it as a fraction, sometimes a mixed fraction, sometimes as a decimal. Here's one more question for you. Rectangle WXYZ is similar to rectangle PQRS with a scale factor of 1.5. If the length and width of P PQRS are 10 and 4 respectively, what are the length and width of WXYZ? So WXYZ is similar to PQRS with a scale factor of 1.5. We have rectangle P Q R S and rectangle W X Y Z with a scale factor of 1.5. The reason I knew that the W X Y Z or W X Y Z was bigger is because the scale factor was 1.5. We were comparing W X Y Z to PQRS. That means I'm going to compare, I'll just use the W rectangle to the P rectangle and we're told that ratio is 1.5 or 1.5 over 1. Now, respectively means that the measurements come exactly as they were given. Here we have length, here we have 10 meters. Then the second measurement was width, and the second number we're given is 4. What we need to do is simply take 10 meters times 1.5, which will give us 15. Then we have 4 meters times 1.5 equals 6. We now have 
the new dimensions of our figure. From that, we could calculate its perimeter, we could calculate its area, or we could just give the two measurements of 16 by or 15 by 6. Again, if you have any questions on this video, make sure to ask in class, and I'll help to clear up any questions you may have. Have a great day!